Konnichiwa and welcome to round 17 of the GP4 OC 2019 season. We are here for the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka, the 12th time that Suzuka has hosted the Japanese Grand Prix, with Fuji Speedway hosting the other two races in 2007 and 2008, the track being one of only two FIA Grade 1 tractors who have a figure of 8 layout, with the track being Oriano, the test uh, circuit for Ferrari in Italy, a circuit of course owned by Japanese car giant Honda, McLaren having won here the most times here at the Japanese Grand Prix, let's see if they can attempt to keep it up. Uh, when it comes to this year's race. Uh, 53 laps scores around Suzuka, circuit length of 5.807 km, 18 corners of lap record set by Warnella back in 2016 at 128.770. Now, of course, last time out the Russian Grand Prix, it was won by Laura Chan getting herself right into the thick of title contention. And of course, she'll be wanting to keep that form up here in, at Suzuka to try and get her first win here. Previous four winners here have included Florian Volker and Wilnella, with Florian Volker having won here the last two seasons and in 2015, but of course, he will not be winning here this year. So we will have a new winner for the first time in a number of seasons. Uh, the tyres of this race will be the medium tyres. And we will now take a look, of course, at the practice results uh, from uh, Suzuka. And with Miguel Scout, the driver who was top ahead of Franco Lopez, Willows, Tomaselli, Gamba, McKenzie, Catalan, Carr, Byrne and Chung completing the top ten. That was practice, however. Now we're going to take a look at the starting grid for the Japanese Grand Prix. And on the front row... It is Amakar, former says, ahead of Laura Chung, and Amakar absolutely decimated everyone in qualifying with his performance. Third position was Franco Gamba for Red Bull. Evan Byrne, a stunning performance for Renault in fourth, and of course I'll add why he's so far up as well. Rola Moichin, fifth position for Racing Point. Miguel Scal, sixth for Red Bull Racing. That is row three, the two Hungarians. On row four, uh, four we have Joseph Willows for Ferrari, and Franco Lopez, who had qualified third, but had the five first group penalty from last time out in Russia, so he dropped eight. Jay McKenzie, 9th for Renault, and George Roke, 10th for Racing Point, and you'll see why Roke's 10th, even though he went out in Q2. De Rossa, 11th for McLaren, and David Kupok, 12th for Toro Rosso. Kupok, who is unlucky to lose out on getting a, a podium, or even a top 4 finish last time out of Russia. Mateo Catalan, 13th for Toro Rosso, Felix Sotsag alongside him. On row 8 of the grid, we have Link Capano for Williams and Pani, and Tomaselli for McLaren. Another good qualifying by Tomaselli, who's generally performed very well this season. Andrea Federi, 17th for Alfa Romeo, Jared Fosbury, 18th for Haas. And on row 10 of the group we have Ch Chris Chatfield for Haas, and of course Gabriel Gomez who got a 10 place group penalty for the incident involving uh, Kupok and Moitin last time out. He originally qualified 10th. And on the last row of the group we have the two manners of Rosetta Martinez and Maxine Titkoff. Maxine Titkoff away off his teammate actually this time round. And team news this week, uh, to the surprise of, well, nobody really, Felix Sontag will remain at Williams for next season, because the question is who will partner him at Williams next season with a number of drivers linked to it. But for the race, it is going to be a wet one. So unlike in real life, wet tyres will actually be used uh, to, in effect for a race, and they will actually work properly. So we are now on the grid uh, for Japanese Grand Prix. Armour car pole position is a very wet race. The five lights are coming on here for the Japanese Grand Prix. The five lights are on, and we are waiting to go and we are now finally underway, and who is going to get the jump into the first goal? It looks like Carr has got a good launch off the line, and it's like Evan Byrne actually is making a, a decent start. He's already got past the Red Bull there of, I think it was Franco Gamma, and he's now, now trying to get up to second place. He's already up to third. Carr's got a brilliant launch, but Chung just about holds up Byrne for second place there, but that's a great start from the Irishman there, up into third position. And so now he's all over the back of Laura Chung as they come through the S section of the circuit, and it's going to be very tricky for these guys on the wet tyres, of course. And as they come through, Carr already stretching his lead, looking at the start. There's a few drivers that moved up. Gomez has moved up three places. Gal Willows, Mojic dropped down a couple. Lopez has not made a good start, actually. He's dropped down to ninth. So that grid penalty may come back uh, to affect him. Meanwhile, Chung already has Byrne right behind. And Chung is going to really have to defend very hard from Byrne. And she does so. 
the rest of the cars coming through this watch in seventh there's Mackenzie Lopez Roke De Rossos with the rest of the field there's Catalan passing Cupot Cupot going wide there allowing Tomaselli to get through and it's all getting a bit stacked up here oh and there's contact and Federi is out and it was contact from behind by Chris Chatfield and we're going to have a look on board from the Englishman to see uh, what happened and of course well, we, s we can see it from a far angle but from the point of view from Chatfield of course will be confirmed and he'll be racing at Alfa Tori uh, for next season it just got a bit stacked up and unfortunately Chatfield just really ran into the back of a dairy there losing his wing meanwhile on board uh, with Maxime Titkoff who's behind Jared Fosbury and the wheel from out of nowhere comes and knocks the wing off of Titkoff's car and that is incredibly incredibly unlucky for him meanwhile we're looking at Evan Burn is all over the back of Chung. Chung really struggling. I don't know if, if she's got heavy fuel or not, but Burn is all over her and they nearly make contact as they come through the double left hand onto the back straight, heading towards 130R. And there we go. Burn is up into second place. So what a start for the Irishman up into second position. And Chung is going to have uh, her mirrors full of the two Red Bulls, Gamba and Gal, who are actually trying to battle themselves. Gal was trying to get past Gamba now. Gamba trying to get past Chung coming into 130R. It's not quite going to work, but he's going to be careful because Gal's right there as well. As they come into the chicane, they need to be careful that uh, they don't make contact, and they don't as they come through. And looking through, there's Lopez who's trying to sneak a look at Mo Moitin, but can't quite make it stick. Uh, Gomez, has said, has made a great start, actually, from where he was. Uh, now up to 60th place. As I'm a car, of course, no surprise, that's the fast lap. He's three and a half seconds clear of burn, and we've only been one lap. That is quite incredible, really, you have to say that. And as we look at uh, Chatfield coming to the pitch, Tickoff, obviously... Change their wings. We're looking at uh, Chung, who's holding up this pack of cars. Burns getting away, but uh, car is getting further away up front. Meanwhile, the two Red Bulls once again battling. That's allowing Chung to get away. This is Gao trying to get past Gamma. This is for third position. They head towards 130R. Is Gao going to make it through here? The answer is no. So you have to wait. And meanwhile, uh, Moitin battling with Mackenzie is Roke and S as De Rossa side by side there coming through 130R. That was very, very scary. And oh, there's contact. Oh, and Lopez is out. And Lopez is out yet again, and from when he was finished in every race in the points, two races in a row, Lopez has retired. So, when your luck uh, comes, when your luck gets unlucky, uh, yeah, you can go right down to the very bottom. And Lopez is out. There's a number of cars in the pits. De Ross is in. I think Moichin is in. Yep. And well, we need to see a replay of that. So, um, we saw behind the battle between Roke and De Rossa as well. So, did Lopez just go into the back of Moichin? I think he did, didn't he? And yes, so Lopez already went into the back of Moichin, which didn't help. So Moitian also got damage, and then behind actually, I think Roke actually went into the back of De Rossa as well. Yep, there was contact, and that's what caused, uh, well, De Rossa then to go into the back of Lopez, who was unlucky there. So there was the move, it was originally a great move by De Rossa, and then coming into the chicane there, Roke got a little bit too close, made contact, and then De Rossa went into the side of Lopez, and that eliminated him from the race as uh, Roke hit the floating wheel there. But unfortunately for Roke, his race is going to be compounded by the fact he's going to have to wait, as his teammate is also in the pits, so unfortunately for him... Uh, Roke's race is effectively ruined as Wojcik comes out and now Roke comes in and they have to wait for ages before we can actually get back out on the circuit as De Rossa comes out of the pits so he'll be at the back of the field so a lot of movements at the moment Gomez uh, from 20th on the grid is already up to 11th Sontag is in the point actually in ninth. Thomas Eli is up to 10th there's been a whole host of movements up the field so far in this race uh, and Gal's actually one of the few drivers who hasn't moved although Willows goes wide and Gal might make it through no actually Willows does hold the position despite Willows I think, did he make a mistake? Uh, no, actually, he originally actually got past Gao, actually, for fifth. He um, narrow past him, but the corner just come around there, coming into the Degners. It was never going to work. And meanwhile, Franco Gamba loses control by himself on the grass and spins out a very, very silly error there for Franco Gamba because he just touches the grass. He was already getting a bit out of shape and then spins and he's going to lose a whole host of positions. So he's actually now down to seventh position. So down behind Willows, Gao, and Jay McKenzie in the Renault, so not good for him there. Meanwhile, we're on board uh, with Lean Kapana in the Williams heading up towards the hairpin. And what happened here? So, and oh, Kapana goes into the back of the uh, Torosso there and spins, actually. And I think Fosbury may have gone into the back of uh, the Williams as well, and he did. So damage to both Kapana and Fosbury. So for Fosbury, his era, uh, which has never begun, and I don't think he's ever beginning, uh, continues to go from bad to worse. Meanwhile, Thomas Eddy battling. This is for ninth place, battling with uh, Gabriel Gomez for 10th. And he does just about make it through. And now he's behind Felix Sontag in the Williams. So they come up towards the Chicane Gomez defending. And actually makes a late move. Actually Gomez down the inside. And takes 10th position back straight away. A good move there by Gomez. So now from uh, 20th on the first lap. He's up 10 places in 4 laps. So good recovery so far from Gomez. But 
Look how far away he was actually coming into the uh, chicane. They made a very late move and mm, timed it perfectly there and made it through up the inside. So now we're looking at Willis who's on the back of Laura Chung. This is the battle for third. Chung seemingly struggling. Woo, that was close. Very close. And Gal is there as well. And Gal might take make a move on the inside here. There's almost contact, but Gal sneaks through. And we've got another yellow flag out on the circuit somewhere. I don't know where. And it is De Rossa, who again is definitely the unluckiest driver this season, is out of the race. And he's retired just after the start finish rate. He had a puncture as well, I saw. So just after he missed the pits, it's just a... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, what could you say? Just so unlucky. Just missed the pits as well. And unfortunately, De Rossa has to retire from the race. you really got to feel for the guy. Just can't catch a break. Um, really just can't catch a break. But he's fortunately, he's already been announced for next season, so it doesn't matter for him. Uh, but, yeah, like, what, what can you say, really? Just not been uh, his season, to be brutally honest. As we know, Sontag snuck through, actually passed uh, Matteo Catalan coming through uh, before the hairpin. There. Good move there by Felix Sontag. And you can see you coming through on the inside. That was a decent move there, wasn't it? Sontag actually has made a good start to 8th position. Meanwhile, Gao now all over the back of Laura Chung. And on the inside, can he make it through? And the answer is yes, finally. So Gao now up into third. He held up behind the two Ferraris for a little bit. And now he might actually be able to go after Evan Byrne, who is street clear in second. And, of course, well, let's not forget about Armour Car, who's actually leading this race. It's now the two Ferraris side by side. Of course, Willows, this will be his final season in Ferrari after a whole host of seasons where he's come close to winning the title but it's just never quite gone for him and this is going to be his last opportunity for Ferrari to win the title so we need to move up the order ASAP and so can't make it through here Chung again really struggling at this moment in time Willows has light fuel and I imagine Chung must have high but of course they've got to look out because McKenzie's there as well and Gamber is catching back up and Gabriel Gomez is off and I don't think he's out but David Kupok has lost his wing so I think he's involved so Gomez are uh, trying to rejoin the circuit there, so I think Kupok and Gomez have had a collision coming into the hairpin as Gomez loses even more of his wing, but it was damaged anyway. Let's have a look on board coming into the hairpin, and yep, Kupok just goes careering into the back of Gomez there, and he's lucky actually he didn't uh, catch Tomaselli in front of him either. He's lucky actually um, that uh, Tomaselli was... Oh, and look at that, the, uh, look at that, the racing point there, almost going to the back of Kupok as well. Almost pinball between uh, those guys. The incident between those two, of course, no surprise. Under investigation, and I would not be surprised if Kupok gets a penalty for that, as uh, Moichi now goes past him. As meanwhile, we're looking on board with McKenzie behind the two Ferraris here, and it's getting very close coming into the hairpin. And oh, it's contact, a bit too close. McKenzie goes wide, and he spins onto the grass, and he loses the position to Franco Gamma. So McKenzie, who had a good race up to this point, loses sixth position, now down to seventh. But fortunately, he's got a big gap. Uh, to the cars behind him so he could catch back up and doesn't have to worry about losing uh, any more positions. Sontag again having a great race at the moment in 8th position. Meanwhile Tomaselli battling with Catalan uh, for ninth place. He's unable to make it stick here as they come through uh, Spoon Kermie. We're looking at Chris Chatford here in 13th coming into the hairpin. He's on the grass. Oh and he's done a gamber. He has spun and exactly what he did and he spins coming into the hairpin there and he's going to drop right to the back of the field. Drops down to uh, 18th place and we'll see a second to last because Gomez at the moment is the one who is in last but uh, again another silly error from uh, Chris Chatfield not had a great race today so far it's only been nine laps in he's on light fuel as well so it could have been so much better for him you can see just never really had control of the cars lost control and there you go that is that and of course Chatfield drops right down to the back of the field uh, so now behind uh, Campana and Roku, of course, actually has recovered up to 16th following uh, that pit stop he had early on. Meanwhile, Moitian trying to get past Catalan. This is the battle for the last point spot. This is for 10th as they come towards 1.30. Oh, Moitian on the inside. Is he through? The answer is yes. And he moves up into 10th place, so now he gets the last point. Meanwhile, Gao is about, I think it's four seconds off of um, Burn in second position. So he's he definitely catching up. Meanwhile, Willows still has not got past Chung yet who is really, really struggling, and now Willis finally on the inside of the Chinese driver, coming into one, towards 130R, and is he going to make it through? No, still not quite going to do it. Or oh, wait, is he? He's just about on the outside, but of course they've got to be careful because Franco Gamba is there as well, and Gamba's going to sneak through, coming into the chicane there, and Willows is going to be kicking himself. He's just not been able to get through, and Gamba, who's recovered from that spin he had earlier on, and manages to get through past Willis there, who uh, slowed down, and they obviously forgot Gamble was there, but Gamble made a, a late move, you could say as well, but saw the gap and went through it. Licked the stamp and sent it. Out the inside, he's now up to fit me, or George Roke is on the back of David Kupok in the Torosso, and this is a battle actually between Kupok, Fosbury, and Roke. Roke now trying to go past Kupok around the outside because he could be stuck in the spray of Fosbury, 
And so he's going to still be on the outside of Kupok coming into 130R. Not quite. He backs off. And allows Kupok to stay ahead there. So they come into the hairpin. And Rote's actually going to make a late move down the inside. And gets through past Kupok there. So good move there. And now he's going to try and get past Jared Fosbury. Coming down towards the start finish line. I don't think he's going to be quite close enough. I think he's just about in the slipstream of Fosbury. I don't think he's close enough to make a move into the first corner. Uh, car at the moment still very clear out front. Gal is definitely closing on Burn in second place at this moment in time. Uh, Franco Gamba all over the back of Laura Chung. Again, no one, uh, well, Willows can't get past it. Let's see if Gamba has any better luck. As they head towards uh, Spoon Curve. And Gamba, oh, he gets so close to the grass there. I really thought he was going to touch it again and spin for some reason. But they always get very close to the grass there. And if you make, if you go slightly too, slightly too much to the right, then you'll touch the grass and you'll be off. So as we look at Gamma now in the slipstream of Chung, and I'm not sure he's going to be close to make a move into 130R, but he could do it kind of the back straight. Meanwhile, uh, Tomaselli has managed to get past Sontag, and uh, that seemed pretty easy, actually. I don't know if Sontag, uh, Sontag didn't have a problem there, so I guess Sontag just had a bad run out of the corner, and just struggling for grip there, and yeah, just had so much more speed there, Tomaselli, and just went through. Uh, pretty easy there. Meanwhile, this is Roke on the inside of Q-Park. They don't make contact, but Q-Park goes off, but Roke actually has got a problem. Roke has got a problem and actually tags Kupok into a spin there. So, uh, Roke was trying to get past Fosbury and Kupok managed to sneak through. And then Roke tried to get back past Kupok. There wasn't any contact. Kupok just went wide. Actually damaged his wing as well. But then I think Roke actually had a mechanical failure and unfortunately uh, managed to spin David Kupok there. Quite an interesting way to retire. So you can see Roke getting overtaken by Kupok there. Tried to get back on the inside and then just as he did. And you can see the right uh, front wheel there. It's got a problem. And then Kupok, I suppose you could say, he just rejoined... Uh, right in front of Roke there, but then of course Roke uh, decided to spin him off. A very interesting way of retiring, or I suppose doing it with style, uh, really. But uh, Roke really didn't like Kupok, I think, for that. Just very frustrated with how that race has gone. So Roke is out, and he now goes into the wall, so that's his race over. Willows, meanwhile, is in the pits uh, for Ferrari. And so it's been a tough race for him so far. But uh, as he goes <clears throat> on to... Well, the next set of wet tyres. Uh, and... Yeah, so he comes out. So Gal coming through. He's now but right behind uh, the McLaren there. Uh, the McLaren. Sorry, the Renault of Burn. And Gomez is off. And he's in the wall. But he just loses his rear wing. But Gomez, who is at the back of the grid anyway. And oh my word. That was... <laughs> that was very, very close to disaster there for Armar Carvey. See, Gomez just got himself on the grass. Spinning. Like a record, baby. And then, obviously, did a very close rejoin there with Armar Carr. That was very close. A couple of seconds sooner, and Carr would have been out of this race. He's got a 15-second gap over Burn out front. And there you can see Gomez rejoining the circuit there. Again, just a couple of seconds earlier. And that could have been disaster. Unfortunately, there wasn't. Thomas Henning, meanwhile, has pitted as well. He comes out down in, it looks like, uh, 11th place. Uh, Carr actually himself is pitting, so he will relinquish the lead... Uh, to Evan Byrne, Galvis that is now only a second off of Byrne. There's a number of cars actually coming into the pits, I guess, because the rain is getting heavy. I think they're on the normal wets now. They're going to go on to the extreme wets because, as I said, the weather is not getting easier, and it pretty much is not going to get easier until the end of the race. And I think even so, yeah, as we've got another yellow flag out, that's the first corner, and Jared Fosbury is out. Another retirement, and for Fosbury, it's just not been a great season for him. Let's, let's face it, uh, to be brutally honest, it's just been a poor season. And he makes a mistake, goes wide on the curve, and just skids off into the wall. And there you go, that's his race over. And you can see he just gets touches the curb. then. That was enough to unsettle the car onto the AstroTurf, which is very, very wet and slippery. And then goes straight into the wall. As so he's just skating around, just has no control over it. It was never going to get out of that one. And yep, that's Fosbury's race over. So now our car, of course, is in the pits, and Byrne will take the lead. He will actually be leading a race. He is ne he'll have never felt uh, like he's, uh, like this before, and actually a couple of cars, car actually getting held up a little bit there, actually, as he comes to the pits. And no, um, <laughs> commentators curse Byrne actually pits on this lap, so in fact he is not going to lead this lap. So uh, I apologise to Byrne there. So Byrne is in, actually, also Gal is in too, actually. Uh, so uh, Gal, who's been closing up to the back of Byrne ever since... Uh, well, Byrne got past the Ferraris as they come out. And I think Byrne is going to jump... Yes, I think uh, Gal is going to jump Byrne. And despite Byrne actually, I think, actually having a quicker stop uh, than Gal, it didn't matter. They got him out quicker. Meanwhile, David Kubak has received 
a 10 second time penalty for causing the incident with Gomez, no surprise there. But uh, so Gao now crucially takes second place uh, on the track now with Byrne down into third, but of course Byrne is doing a great job, he comes up just ahead of uh, Franco Cameron. Remember these cars obviously already on it seems the extreme wets, um, but uh, so the, the weather is not going to get much better. And Miguel Relamoichid is off at the chicane there. And he, I think he's made a mistake on his own. I don't think there was anyone really anywhere near him. But he made a mistake. And so he's dropped a number of positions as he's trying to rejoin. And he rejoins the wrong way. And he's out. So this was why he was actually in the battle. It was actually. He made contact, it looks like, with Felix Sontag. And yep, there it was. A little bit of contact. And he's lucky, actually. He didn't damage the car already from um, hitting the wall there as he originally spun. But, of course, then... Yeah, he uh, manages to rejoin the wrong way. The uh, tyre's not working and the steering not working as he, as he would like. And unfortunately, Rolemoichin is now out. So now that means both racing points, of course, are now out of the race. So car at the moment out front has got a 13-second gap to Gal. I'm pretty sure that was actually a bit more coming to the top. It was about 14 seconds to burn. So Gal has definitely closed the gap a bit. Uh, meanwhile, as Martinez at the moment in 10th, and that was very close as the McLaren gets on the grass there. Tomaselli in very lucky not to spin it, but... Yeah, that could have gone a whole lot worse uh, for the Italian there. And luckily, he backed out there. And again, he lost control and he almost spun. Fortunately, he didn't. And so, they get away with the collision there. Meanwhile, Maxi Tikoff actually is going to be going into the pits on this lap as well. And there's the uh, view from uh, Tikoff's car. So, you can see uh, Thomas Eddie sliding through the corner there. And again, touching the grass. He's lucky he was going slow enough that he didn't uh, spin the car. But you can see, look how wet it is. It's almost hurting my eyes how shiny the track is there um, as uh, Thomas A now finally does go past Martinez uh, for 10th position there so Martinez who of course is the only driver this season so far yet to score a point in the top two everyone else has he's the only one who so far is yet to do so but uh, there's always a chance that he could do it at the moment there's uh, 16 cars left and Tikoff actually is attempting to go past him here but of course Tikoff is going to be pitting this lap so he doesn't really need to do it so as they come through towards 130R and nope nothing done there so Tikoff stays behind uh, Gao about 13 seconds behind car as Tikoff well I, I can't believe what I, <laughs> I can't believe what has just happened and now Martinez is going to have to go to the pits after Tikoff as well would you believe what has just happened there and I don't just utterly bizarre really utterly bizarre what has just happened there between the two manners uh, so now Martinez is in the pits but of course he's now going to wait for Tikoff who originally was pitting anyway and so Martinez's race is effectively ruined so again I was saying about him possibly getting points but maybe out of the question now uh, meanwhile of course we're looking at Gal in second place he's got away from Burn in, in uh, third so I don't know what the gap is to car out front uh, it was about 13 seconds before. The gap now is, I think, as we come out, it's at 12.9. So it's it's uh, staying roughly about the same. It's gone down slightly. Um, but as we look at Burn at the moment in third position, um, Jay McKenzie actually is yet to pit uh, in the other Renault. We're looking at Paulino Tomaselli uh, in tenth position at this moment in time. Chatfield, meanwhile, is in the pits for Haas. Um, so as he's just, just coming out actually of his stop so at the moment we've got 16 cars left and I think we're actually about 16 laps in or we're now 90 laps in well, this is David Kupok batting with Gomez as they come through and oh they made contact Kupok is out and I think Gomez is out as well and those two have come together yet again and this time they've taken each other out so Gomez is out and now David Kupok is out and of course revenge I must I forget revenge of course maybe it is for what happened uh, in Russia, of course, with Gomez taking out Kupok and Moisey in the battle for the podium later on. Uh, but they are now both out, and they will have to settle it off track with a fist fight. And so this was, again, Kupok tried to make it on the inside. I don't think it was... I mean, Gomez, you can see, was turning in, but there was a corner there. It almost, almost has uh, Verstappen Hamilton uh, incident, this uh, vibes, this incident. Um, but anyway, nonetheless, they have taken each other out, just like Hamilton and Verstappen have in real life. And so... Yeah, they are not going to be happy with each other. They're both going to blame each other for that. But again, revenge for what happened, I think, in Russia is probably the, the best way you can explain it, really. But the incident between the two, again, will be put under investigation. So we'll see what the stewards have to say about that one. Meanwhile, the gap actually up front it has, is coming down actually a bit more. It's down to now 9 seconds uh, between uh, Carr and Gal. 9.3, exactly. Um, Gal has left Burn in the dust. He's 24 seconds behind Burn, so... Uh, but he's comfortably on his own in third anyway, Burns, so he'll happily take a podium if he gets it. Uh, we're looking at Matteo Catalan in tenth, and he's gone off into the grass and into the gravel, and he has lost his rear wing, done exactly what Gomez did. 
And he rejoins the circuit. Oh, right in front of the Mercedes again. Right in front of the car. His life flashing before his eyes. And fortunately, uh, no damage done to the car. But he gets held up quite uh, significantly by Catalan. Who makes a, again, a mistake that uh, Gomez did earlier on. Spins. Not quite as uh, spectacular as Gomez. Not as fast. But nonetheless, he uh, loses his rearing. And then rejoins right in front of the car as well. Deja vu moment right there. Uh, meanwhile, we're looking... Uh, this is the battle between, uh, I think this is Tomaselli versus Sontag, P8, coming in towards the hairpin. Sontag, again, having a good race so far, managing to keep it inside the points as they come through the hairpin. And will we see a repeat of the move we saw earlier, uh, where Tomaselli went through? And it looks like, not quite here, but Tomaselli's got a much better run here through, so he might try to make it on the inside of Sontag. Meanwhile, Chung is into the pits as uh, Sontag really defending hard there. Thomas Lee trying on the inside but unable to make it stick although Sontag really struggling it seems on these tyres and as they come through the uh, d coming through the left hander there coming through Spoon now heading up towards 130R. Gamma meanwhile has made his stop as well he's uh, rejoined down in P5 and Thomas Lee trying to get through on the inside heading towards 130R but he just not got the speed he just have to wait until uh, the chicane to make his next move or if that fails make it through coming up towards the start finish line it's very close between the two they head towards the chicane and uh, no movement there so they stay behind each other now come off the chicane if Thomas Lee can stay behind Sontag and get a good run then he could make it into the first corner look at the uh, drive that Sontag got off the corner there so I don't think that's going to happen so as we look at uh, Joseph Willis in fourth at the moment I thought for a second he lost a bit of the wing for the way the spray was uh, Sontag in eighth there's Thomas Lee in, again right behind him not close enough just didn't get a good run off the final chicane there, so Sontag goes a little bit wide though. This could be Thomas Eddie's chance. No, but as they come through the S's here, uh, it's not. You don't see many drivers make, or don't see any drivers in fact making a move through here. So Thomas Eddie's going to have to buy his time, and he is going to have to wait and see uh, next coming into the Degners is when his next opportunity is of course going to be, and he's f f pushing Sontag through there. Now if he gets a good run off here, he could make it into the Degners. So here we go. He's going to be in the situation of Sontag. This is Thomas Hedy's best chance. Uh, and oh no! Oh well, and Sontag is out. Oh, that's a major crash right in front of Carr again! And Carr has got away with it. He's got away with no damage, but that's a spectacular crash. Oh no, and there's Gal who was attempting to lap the manor there of, I believe that was Maxine Tickoff, and had to back off there as he sees Sontag's car coming through there. That was, uh, again, a scary accident. That could have been a whole lot worse. But again, Sontag, who is struggling on his tyres, defending from Tomaselli there. And they make contact, and Sontag went off spectacularly there. There's Connor just, I think, caught Tomaselli unaware, just went heavily in his wall, and then again, destroying the car, and again, right in front of Armar Car. He is the luckiest man on planet Earth there. But you see Sontag coming through the corner, and just, again, just getting a little bit slow, and then into the wall, into the other side. And yeah, a big, big crash there for... Uh, Felix Sontag, and again, lucky that it didn't collect anyone else. This is the onboard view from Palina Tomaselli coming through here. And as you can see, again, Sontag going a little bit slower. I think he, it, you could say Tomaselli went a bit fast, but I don't think he expected um, Sontag to be going as slowly through there as he did. So, again, I think probably a racing incident, I think. Uh, a bit of uh, miscommunication, I guess you could say, uh, or lack of understanding. Uh, but Thomas anyway has to go into the pits for a new uh, front wing anyway, and Sontag will have to make his way to the pits uh, without his car. Again, that was a very spectacular crash, well over 100 miles an hour. Sontag goes right into that wall there. Well, not only that, he went into the into that wall and then goes into the other wall at high speed as well, and then coming through the corner. There is actually Yama car. There he is coming through the other side there. And again, how car was, he's been so lucky. He's avoided three accidents. There's definitely a, a guardian angel looking on him this race, that is for sure. Um, so uh, here we are looking on, the, on board from our car, just coming through in the lead. Again, the gap coming down to 7.3 to Gal. And he sees the, the, the car coming through, just avoids the wheel there. And avoiding all the other bits to read. Well, he actually hits this bit before she doesn't get any damage. And Gal, as I said, who was attempting to lap, Maxi Tickoff has to quickly take avoiding action there. Uh, to, yeah, so there wasn't uh, another major accident, so Gao is lucky himself that uh, he doesn't get any damage from that. Uh, we're looking at this replay one more time, but again, I think it's just a a lack of understanding, I think is the best way of putting that one. But uh, Sontag, unfortunately for him, after having such a promising race, and I was just mentioning how well he was doing, is out, and we're looking again at Sontag's point of view, and we're going to look at it, I guess, in uh, full speed, uh, coming through, and then there was the hit, and then into that wall, and then 
into the other one, and that is a very painful collision. Meanwhile, we're looking at Mikolas Kalk at the moment, he's in second again, it's just seemingly eking, closing back as Thomas Lee trying to get past Chris Chatfield uh, for 10th position, it's very close, and I think some, uh, I think Chatfield may have lost his wing, and yes, he did, I thought I saw something come off the front of uh, Chatfield's car there, he has lost his wing, now he's going to go into the pits again, so Chatfield has had a, an absolutely terrible race, really, there, there's just no other way of putting it, utterly, utterly terrible, and so he's going to pit again, and so his chance of points is now diminishing rapidly, uh, trying to defend uh, the last point spot from Thomas Lee. They're really defending hard, but unfortunately Thomas Lee was... Uh, and, and, well, I suppose Chatfield was actually pitting this lap anyway. Uh, so Chatfield would have been coming in anyhow. But, of course, now they're going to have to add a new wing as well as the tyres. I mean, well, this is a battle. This is Thomas Lee trying to regain position. Now goes past uh, the Williams of Capana coming into the hairpin. And now uh, Catalan is there as well. But at the moment running on his own in third position, just ahead of this uh, gaggle of uh, cars here. Um, so he is in third, and it doesn't look like anyone is really going to uh, bother him at this moment in time. He's not going to have uh, a chance for victory, because Gao and Carr are just way too far ahead in the distance. Uh, so we're looking at Lee Capana coming through, defending from Catalan. Uh, Capana gets a bad run through there, and actually Catalan is right behind the Williams. They come now out of a spoon curve, heading towards 130R. I so said the gap uh, burned to Willis is about, uh, well it's a pit stop in fact, it's actually 30 seconds, meanwhile Catalan on the inside of Lean Capana heading towards 130R as they come through, and is he going to make it stick? Nope, he is not, and so, oh and never mind, Catalan won't be making the move, he is going to be out of this race, he has got a car failure, a transmission problem, and Matea Catalan is out of this race, and that is no points for him, so so that is good news actually for us uh, Chatford, he moves up another position actually back up into... 11th, but that means there's, there's only going to be 12 cars, so almost half the field is out, and we're only about halfway through. So if it keeps going at this rate, no cars will finish this race. But Catalan is now out with a transmission failure, a car failure uh, for the Toro Rosso drivers. There come the, uh, there comes uh, Gamba and Willows battling for fourth place there. And there's uh, Mackenzie as well, not too far behind, and a transmission failure, of course, there for Catalan. Oh no! And oh dear, and just as Laura Chung was lapping uh, Rosetta Martinez, and Martinez unfortunately uh, goes into uh, <laughs> Martinez goes into the stricken car cut on there, and his race just going from bad to worse, really, uh, Martinez. Just very, very unlucky uh, this race. And again, this was uh, Martinez who, who was just again being lapped by Chung, and unfortunately, yeah, there was Catalan's car right in the way there. So Martinez was already last anyway. Uh, pits again to stay last. Again, the gap uh, to uh, ga uh, between Carr and Gao about six seconds. So the gap is coming down. Uh, Gao is pitting in a few laps time. So I wonder if uh, Gao might try, I suppose, the a major undercut on Carr, depending on how close he can get to him really in the next few laps before he pits. Now I would imagine it, when he pits, he'll probably uh, go to the end. Uh, so as you look. A gal coming towards. We're looking at actually Evan Byrne at the moment in third position, and a comfortable third. And actually, here we go. The gap actually down 5.2 seconds actually to Armar Car. So again, quite a bit off, but still, Gal is going to pit, and I would imagine he's going to go to the end. Meanwhile, this is the battle between uh, for P5. This is between Mackenzie and Willows, and Mackenzie through up into P5 as they come towards the chicane. Although Willows is going to try to get it straight back, and does he do it? And the answer is, I think, does he? Willows might have to run on the inside, Mackenzie. Is he going to make it stick? I think Mackenzie's got the run off the corner, so I think he's still got the move done, Mackenzie, and yes, he has. And Willis can seize the position to Mackenzie, but that was a great move uh, by him. But Willis might actually try and get him straight back here, coming into the first corner. Willis is going to try it. They're very close, but no contact made, and so Mackenzie now finally does have the move complete. And so good move there by Jamie Mackenzie, but the Ferraris definitely have struggled uh, this race. And uh, yeah, now Laura Chung on the back. Which is Willis. They've both got one more stop actually to go. Uh, both these drivers. Uh, Chung is going a lot longer than Willows, but of course Chung clearly, seemingly, is the quicker car at the moment. So interesting to see what they do. And of course they're both in the fight for the championship here. So what do they do? Do they allow them just to keep battling? Uh, meanwhile, Gal now, of course, in the pits for his last stop of the race, I believe. I think it'd be stupid to see if they if they didn't pit, if they didn't put him to the end. So Gal now in. Burn just coming through uh, Spoon now. Gal is in. And, yep, changes all four tyres, and he, yes, he is going to the end. So there we are. So the incident between the, uh, Gomez and Cupot concluded to be a racing incident, which, yeah, I guess is fair enough. 
you know, this is Tikkoff battling uh, with Tomaselli and battling with the Renault in front there of Byrne. But uh, Byrne will want these two to li just leave him alone. But Tikkoff at the moment still in a battle of points in a controversial way, of course, by uh, hitting his teammate. Uh, I think that was Lin Kapano I just saw was pitting uh, th this lap as well. Uh, so, as we look at Laura Chung all over the back of Willows, and now Chris Chatfield is there as well, but of course Chatfield is a lap down, but he's looking to unlap himself. Two Ferraris once again battling as they head up towards 130R. This battle could go on for a while. It went on uh, for a while at the start of the race, it's now continuing on. But uh, now Chris Chatfield is there trying to unlap himself, he's going to try and overtake, and oh, Chung makes contact with Willows, and Chung is off, and I think she's lost her front wing. And yes, she has. So Chung has lost her front wing. And, oh, and he, as she tries to rejoin, and actually, I think she might get away without any damage here. And as Chung is attempting to join the track, it seems, or not, and Chung is out. So, yeah, that is another retirement, and that is now half the field gone. As the marshal comes and pushes her car away. So Moichi managed to get uh, to rejoin that damage, but uh, as you know, he didn't, sorry. No, he went out anyway, actually. So Chung, again, the next car, who unfortunately re uh, fails to rejoin the track correctly, in these conditions and again it already damaged uh, her car by going into the wall so she would have had to make another stop anyway so her race was already effectively ruined again but uh, yeah and it looked like she'd found the way but uh, she got confused somehow and yeah that is Chung's race over and just as I was saying they were in title contention Chung retires and so now Tomaselli battling uh, this is I believe uh, this is with Evan Byrne I think actually because Mackenzie is in front of these two so I think uh, Byrne might be struggling on these tyres at this moment in time, so let's have a look. Uh, Gao to Carl, the gas about 25 seconds. Willows is off. Willows is off, and he's got damage as well. He loses his wing, and he's got damage after Chris Chatfield was trying to unlap himself. And so Willows will not be too happy with that. But the Ferraris, it's been a disastrous race. That is, that's all we can say. Willows just went way off there. We've seen a few moments. We haven't seen any major crashes there per se, but again, I'll not be happy with the fact that Chatfield was trying to unlap himself coming round. Uh, Degner there, so yeah, he'll be pretty unhappy with that. So meanwhile, Byrne is coming in and will go to the end of the race. Uh, Gal at the moment, I said, in second position, and the gap was 25 seconds. So that could be that could be actually be very close with regards to Carl. I don't know what the gap is now. Uh, I think is that 23 actually. Yeah. So at the moment, if Carl, if Carl was to pit now, I think he would actually come up behind Gal actually. So I think uh, Red Bull might have had a genius play here. And uh, meanwhile, Willows looking to pass the Mercedes here. This must be of armor car out front. Well, it, of course, it has to be. So Willows coming through the hairpin, of course, on fresh tyres now. We'll be looking to unlap it. So this is great news, of course, for Gal. The gap now down to 19 seconds. So he will comfortably... As, uh, oh, Thomas said he goes wide, and he loses his wing as well. And more damage, and more mistakes here. So Thomas said, I think this is by himself as well. He was behind, closing up to the back of Betsy Teal, which just goes a little bit too wide onto the grass and loses a bit of his wing there so unfortunately for Tomaselli he uh, has to pit and Jay McKenzie no Jay McKenzie how unlucky he's the, he's been one of the unlucky he's been the unluckiest alongside De Rossi this season again in a very promising position had such a great race and a mechanical failure causes his retirement you really really got to feel for the guy uh, meanwhile Willows again all over the back of Carr who is really struggling but of course Willows is on fresher tyres and Carr goes wide there and I mean, this is just music to the ears of Gao. He's down to 11 seconds now. So, well, Carl will be behind Gao. So, Red Bull might have actually played an unbelievable uh, big brain strategy call by uh, calling Gal in uh, when they did. Because Carl is, just, is struggling so badly. He's not pitting, actually, for a few laps yet. But I guess they're probably thinking if Carl pits when he does, he'll be so much quicker than Gal at the eggs. Gal's gaining a lot, but I suppose it is helping by the fact that. Uh, um, Willows is battling with Carl. I think Gal would have still been ahead of the pit stop anyway, but hoo -hoo, this could be a very, very interesting ending. And actually, Martinez, I just realised, Martinez is now in the points. Because McKenzie's now, we've only got 10 cars left in this race, but of course, let's not forget, if Martinez was retired now, he would not get any points from this race, of course, because you'd have to uh, get, uh, well, you have to f uh, have done 90% of the race distance to be classified. So, hmm. So at the moment, Martez will be getting his first points of the season, and if he does, it would mean every driver in this season will have scored a point. So the gap again now down to just nine seconds. It is between uh, Gal and Carr. So it is coming down rapidly. Willows all over the back, and now finally, will he be able to get past Carr? Might as well just let Willows go because Willows is clearly much quicker than he is, and of course, Willows is going to the end. 
Still can't make it through as they come towards uh, the chicane past 130R. Gal is just gaining very quickly. And oh, there's contact between the two. Oh, and Willows is off. Well, at least that is good news for Carl. That means Willows is not going to bother him anymore. And so Gal now through. The gap down to seven seconds. It is coming down just so rapidly. I wonder if Gal could even actually catch up to him before he stops. As Willows, again, was running all the way down in fifth. And I think, will he actually be able to rejoin safely? And yes, it does. It looks like he will be able to find the right way to the track around the old chicane. And so he rejoins actually without damage as well. But uh, Willows in fifth place on his own. So it doesn't look like he's going to get a podium today. But again, he's very lucky. He hits the wall. Doesn't get any damage. And here we go. Now this is legitimately the battle for the lead of this race. Carl, who is yet to pit. Who is pitting once more, I should say. But Gal so much quicker than him. Because Carl was struggling. They're ready for Willows. And Gal, this will be a very easy move into the first corner. If he can do it. He's alongside Carl. Will he make it stick? And the answer is yes. Gal leads. But of course, crucially, now Armour Carr is pitting. And so I'll be pitting with, uh, well, will essentially be 12 laps left. And even though Gal is going to be, is much quicker now, when Carr pits in, he will be, he will be a lot quicker as well. So, I'd say there still could be a battle for the win, possibly, I think. I don't think this race is over by any means. But, uh, as I said, Carl will comfortably have P2. He doesn't even have to worry about anyone else. The sky maybe looks to be brightening up a little bit, I don't know. But, anyway, Carl comes in, very quick stop, 4.6 seconds. And so it, Carl now has to really put hammer time mode on and get after Gal. Meanwhile, this is the battle for P3, actually. This is between Franco Gamba and Byrne, actually. But Gamba is pitting, actually. Byrne, I think, is still going to, the, is going to the end. So Gamba pitting once more. So we could see another battle, actually, between those two as well, actually. But at the moment, Nicholas Gal, uh, who closed on Carl after his stop and everything, did an early one and managed to jump it. At the moment, he's leading. The gap is 25 seconds. I mean, there's, there's 11 laps left. Carl will, for sure, close the gap. Uh, by a, a fair amount, but will it be enough? It's going to be the big question. I'm not sure, but at the moment, look at the rest of the world. Tickoff at the moment is in sixth place. Maxine Tickoff in sixth position at this moment in time. He had to get some good points from Manon Martins at the moment. The last car at the moment in tenth. So, as they were looking at Maxine Tickoff at the moment in sixth, Burn lapping, uh, lapping him there. Gambit in fourth could go after him. And look at that. The gap already down to 19 seconds. It was 25. And oh no. Chris Chatfield is out. And it's definitely not 90% of the race distance yet. So Chatfield, who is actually pitting on this lap, goes off. And is the first driver to, I suppose, have that kind of crash there. But Chris Chatfield out of the race. And he will not be classified as he has not done 90% of the race distance. So now that means we've got nine cars left. And good news for Monsters, if he can finish, that is. He is now going to get two points. And so that's even better. So looking at the gap up front, it's down to 12, 12 seconds it is now. So, And how many laps have we got to do? We've got about seven laps left. So, I mean, if Carl's closing on him this quickly, yeah, I think we could. See, I think it could be actually quite close. Uh, so as we look at Gal coming through, let's see if we can see the gap on the bottom of the graphic there. It's 12.7. What's the gap now? 11.5. So he's gained uh, over a second in that sector. So, yeah, I think if he's gaining about that in just a sector... Then I think, yeah, Carl definitely is going to catch Gal come towards the end of this race. So, get your popcorn, get whatever food you want out and ready. We are set to see a battle for the win of the Japanese Grand Prix. They come across the line. What is the gap now? It's about 11, I think, point two. Yeah, 11.2 seconds. And he's just so much, Carl is just so much quicker. So, hmm, this is going to be tight. Very, very tight. Meanwhile, Gamba actually is only 7 seconds off burn. Uh, so Gamma actually could easily uh, get Burn actually for the podium, which would be quite harsh on Burn, who's had such a good race, actually kept it clean for the entirety of the race as well. And so, yeah, let's hope uh, that uh, Burn could keep P3 as we will tick off all over the back of Tom say this is for P6. And uh, tick off trying to get some good points and get his highest ever finish in the OC for Mana, and he's now past the McLaren of Tom say he's up into sixth position. A great race from Maxine Tickoff, barring, of course, the uh, collision, of course, that he had uh, with his teammate, of course. Um, but, yeah, the gap now, 10 seconds. And, I uh, mean, well, this is the battle for third, actually, between uh, Franco Gamba and Evan Burns. So, Gamba has caught up. So, fresher tyres making all the difference as it's very close between the two. And I think Gamba's through, is he? Yes. And Gamba is through. And you've got to feel for Burns, who's not put a foot wrong today. And, unfortunately, he's going to lose out on third. He's going to have no... Uh, He's going to have no uh, retort to Gamba there. And now, Miro, this is it. And I was right, Carr has caught up to Gamba. We're about to go on to the final lap of the race. So here we go. 
to quote your favourite Italian football journalist. And now this is the battle for the race win. We're now on the last lap. And Carr is so much quicker than Gao. Is he going to make it with the first corner? The answer is yes. He tried to have a go card. I don't think he's quite got enough. Gao really struggling. He's got to give it everything he's got. And this is a pure out battle for the win. Of course, Carr, who's, who's not really in title contention, but would love another win. And Gal, who really needs this win, of course, uh, to keep himself uh, in total contention, because he's had uh, probably his, he's had so far his best season in the OC, that is for sure. As they're coming through the S's now, coming up, heading towards Degna, and the battle for the lead. And of course, this is Carl's best opportunity now into Degna as they come through uh, into Degna. No! I can't believe what has just happened! I cannot believe what has just happened! And it's a repeat of what happened between Tomaselli and Sontag, and incredibly, in the most controversial way possible, Armar Carr, I think, has just won this race. And it's happened again, of course, there, and, well, yeah, it's, it's almost exactly the same thing that happened before. This is on board with Carr. Gao, of course, on struggli uh, struggling on low tyres, and it's lucky, actually, that uh, Gao didn't have the same accident that, of course, Sontag did have. But unbelievable. See, I, I, I can't believe it. I really cannot believe what I have just seen. And so Armar Carr, as you can see, just goes to the back. I mean, Gal went slow because he's struggling, to, uh, Gal, to hold off Carr. And, well, that is one way to win the race, by going into your rival. But whoo-wee, that, ooh, uh, that's just, I've never, I, I think this is probably one of the most dramatic endings ever in OC history. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. And, I, yeah, I honestly can't, can't think of the top of my head. Uh, we've, uh, when we've seen an ending quite like this. But uh, the front two with damaged cars are going to take one two. But Armour Car is going to win uh, the Japanese Grand Prix. It looks like as long as he can get to the line. I mean, imagine if we have another twist in the tail. That would just be insane. But uh, you can see, I mean, Armour Car uh, looked like uh, Red Bull had uh, done them over on strategy. But of course, pitting late on on uh, wet track that's I think drying up. I don't think we've had much rain in the last uh, bit of the race. But uh, Mercedes they managed to get back at Red Bull, and in, again uh, probably not in the way they would have wanted, but uh, managed to overtake Gal and win this race. As Armour Car is going to come round with a damaged front wing, and Armour Car is going to win the Japanese Grand Prix. What an ending across the line! That was something else. He wins one hour thirty nine minutes. So long races. Now Miklas Gal about to come across the line with no rear wing, no downforce, and he's set to come across, come across the line in second. He'll be gutted. He's lost out on the race win in that fashion, but again he's had a very consistent season. He's right in the thick of title contention. Willows in fifth place. Not a great race for him. Frank of Gamba uh, set to take P three for Red Bull again. He he came out of nowhere. Last week in Russia, he was about, with I think, six or seven laps to go, he was like eighth, and he came to uh, get third. Uh, not quite in the same fashion. I don't think he really deserved P3 again, but he's going to get it. And, of course, Gamma, who's not yet been announced, uh, well, as, or is, well, yeah, we'll see for next season if he can improve his form or not. Uh, as Evan Byrne, unfortunately, you got to feel sorry for him. Totally deserved the podium. Didn't put a foot wrong at all. Been running in second for the whole first half of the race. And, yeah, across the line... And finally, Rosetta Martinez, it's been a pretty, uh, so it's not been a great race for him, but he finally is going to get his first points in the OC, across the line in ninth. And of course, Tickoff will come across the line in sixth, his best finish in the OC as well, so both men are getting points, but uh, for Martinez it will just be a blessed relief that he'll finally get some points on the board. R uh, before this race, the only driver yet to score any points, and now he's got some. Uh, Paulino Tomaselli, again, could have finished a lot higher. Um, made a couple of silly mistakes which cost him uh, higher positions. He comes across the line in 7th position. And there we go. Lee Capano, of course, was uh, in 8th as well, so he gets some points for Williams. There is the race over. So let's take a look at the full race results. So it was Armacar who won the race with him getting the fastest lap as well, so he gets the extra point. Gal in 2nd position. Frank Gamma in 3rd. Evan Byrne in 4th. Uh, with the following dry, with the rest of the order being as follows. Joseph was 5th. Maxine Tinkoff 6th. Pani and Thomas 7th. Lee Capano 8th. And Rosetta Martin is 9th, which Chris Chatfield, who wasn't uh, who was running up in the points, retiring. Mackenzie also out of the race as well, with Laura Chung, Sarah Catalan, Felix Sonsa, Gabriel Gomez, David Kupok, Brenna Moichin, Jared Fosbury, George Roque, Kirosa de Rosa, Franco Lopez, Andrea Federi, all drivers who didn't finish this race. Only nine finishes in uh, the in the Japanese Grand Prix. A lot of uh, chaos in the rain here. 
Now looking at the driver's standing. So of course Gao now of course ahead of Willow's already in the championship. The gap is coming down, but Lobis still has a relatively healthy gap. Uh, and of course Gao ahead of Willow's by nine points. Chung again uh, fourth, Car in fifth, Gamba sixth, Thomas thirty seventh, Evan Booming up to eighth ahead of Catalan in ninth, De Rossa tenth, uh, Vaderi in eleventh, looking down at the rest of the order. The other movements include Maxim Tikov moving ahead of Sontag into eighteenth. Um, yeah, and Jared Fosby going down to 21st. Martinez, of course, still last despite getting his two points, but at least he has got points on the board, so you've got to be happy for the guy. Um, so, yeah, a, lot, a number of movements in the driver's standings. Now, we'll look at the constructor standings, of course. And at the top of the st uh, standings it is Mercedes, who extended their gap to Ferrari by 21 points. Uh, Red Bull again closing on Ferrari in second. Uh, McLaren on their own in uh, fourth. Renault moving above uh, Alfa Romeo, Torosso, and Racing Point. All moving down up, uh, so into the top five with Haas in ninth, uh, Williams in tenth, Manor just one point behind them now in eleventh actually. And the driver day was a joint vote between Tickoff and Burn, although we've just given it solely to Burn. But AO, uh, good drivers from both, but Tickoff of course with his uh, collision with Martinez. Uh, but anyway, that was the Japanese Grand Prix, a very, very, very dramatic ending. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you for the next round of the Mexican Grand Prix at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez. Don't forget to check out all our links in the description. Check out our Twitter, join our Discord, check out Wikia. That's it, everybody, and we'll see you for the next round in Mexico. See you later.